do you ever find yourself saying, I hate conflict, but when you look at your life, it's full of conflict. Everything around you, no matter what it is, whether it's at work, whether it's at home, whether it's at the gym or friends or whatever it is, it just seems to always end up in conflict. Let me ask you this. Have you ever stopped to consider, ever thought about what's the common thread was the one constant in all of your conflict? Because a number of years ago in my own life, that's where I was. And at times I still am, but I really at a point in my life, it didn't matter what it was or how it was going or, you know, if I was on vacation or at work or whatever, I was in conflict. And it hit me. Do you know what my one common thread was? Do you know what, when I end that life, when, when it, that conflict starts to come, it hit me. The, the common thread, the one thing that held all of that conflict together was me. I was the one that was involved in all of that conflict. And see, for years, I'm talking you know, five, six, seven years, I told myself, you know, both in my mind and I told others who would listen that it was everybody else. You know, this person had the problem, that person had the problem, or this situation was created by someone else. But I never took personal responsibility, right? I never looked at it and said, what was my role in it? So if that's where you are in your life, maybe you've realized it, or maybe you're starting to realize it, or maybe you have realized it, but you don't want to admit it, or you have admitted it, but you're looking for some, some steps to take. So let me tell you three things, three steps that I do in my life when conflict starts to come up, when I see it coming. These are three things that I really work on, all right? The first is uh, Proverbs 15.1. You know, basically bite your tongue. Walk away. A soft answer turns away wrath. So when that moment comes, disengage. Don't participate in it. You can stop it right there, at least for the moment, and give yourself time to figure out a, a plan, right? The second is Colossians 3.13, forgive. You know, it talks about, you know, bearing one another's burdens and going to them. And, you know, if you've got to complain and asking for forgiveness and forgiving them. And, you know, there's all this scriptures about forgiving, and hey, it's easy to say, right? You know, forgive others. But the practical side of it, of really forgiving, is something you have to work on. It's something I have to work on. And the third step is to pray. Pray for that person. Um, it talks about in the scriptures, you know, confess your sins one to another and pray for another. So why? So you can be healed. You know, James is wisdom there. What God gave him to write to Christians is, is amazing, uh, especially when you look at it, applying it to our lives. So you're to forgive someone. You're to pray for them. You're supposed to seek that healing of that relationship. But how can you do that? How can you walk away from something? How can you disengage? How can you forgive? How can you pray for but there's only one way that you can do it. And there's only one way that I can do it where we can maintain it to where it changes our life, to where it changes us, where, it, you know, we works on that bitterness in our life and it works on that desire to live in that conflict. And the only way to do it is our relationship with God. I can't sustain forgiving someone. I can't sustain holding my tongue. I can't pray for someone that I don't like except through my relationship with God. That's the only way I can do it. And it's the only way you can do it. So if you have conflict in your life, there's scriptures that talk about how to deal with these things and what to do and when to do it and all of that. But it comes down to one central theme. It comes down to one thing that you have to do and one thing that you have to maintain that no one else has any say over. No one else can change how you do it. And that's your relationship with God. So if you really want to change the conflict in your life, look at where you are in that relationship with God. I hope this has been encouraging to you. I hope it's challenged you to really look at what's going on in your life 
And if you, you know, need any more help or you're looking for some more materials, you can visit handlinglife.org. And there you'll find like a, a book I've written called Modern Day Jonah. You can download a free uh, ebook of it. There's a whole program there that goes through all different types of things that Christians are faced with and how do we actually take God's word and apply it, application into our lives. Because that's what it's about, right? If we're a Christian and we're walking with God, then we have to take God's word and apply it to the situations, to the circumstances in our lives. And if we do that, our life, not that our life will be a bed of roses, but our life will be more, you know, joyful and more content and more balanced because even when we're going through the rough times, even when we're going through the things that we don't understand, we know that God is there with us. We know that God is working on our behalf. I'm Nathan Tabor. I'm the founder and executive director of Handling Life. And again, if you want to learn more or access some free materials or other podcasts, you can visit handlinglife.org.